This presentation will give you the theory and experimental procedures needed for measuring pressure drop in a piping network. In order to calculate pressure drops through pipes, we first must do an open system energy balance. From our Principles 2 class, we have the relationship for an open system where the change in enthalpy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy will equal the heat uh, added or removed from the system minus the shaft work. Also note that the change in enthalpy can be given by the relationship where that will equal the change in internal energy plus the change in pressure times volumetric flow rate delta PV dot. If the temperature remains constant therefore delta U will be equal to zero and the fluid is incompressible therefore the volumetric flow rate remains constant, we can rewrite our open system energy balance as follows, where the change in pressure times volumetric flow rate plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy equals the heat added or removed from the system minus the shaft work. Rearranging this equation, we end up with delta P by rho will equal the the difference in the velocity squared between out and in over 2. We also have the gravitational uh, constant times the change in elevation if there is any plus the shaft work over the mass flow rate and that will equal the heat added removed divided by the mass flow rate. We'll now redefine W sub s as a specific shaft work which is uh, WS dot divided by the mass flow rate. And we'll redefine the Q over M dot term as the sum of the frictional forces. And we'll use V bar as the average velocity over cross section of pipe. Therefore, our pressure drop equation now reduces to delta P by rho plus the square of the average velocity differences in and out divided by 2 times alpha where alpha equals 1 for turbulent flow and alpha equals 0 0.5 for laminar flow plus the potential energy chain G delta H plus W sub S plus the sum of the frictional factors equals 0. Now for a straight pipe F is given by the formula 2 times the fanning friction factor times the velocity squared times L divided by D where L is the length of the pipe and D is the diameter. And for various fittings we will have the same formula for F except now we'll use an equivalent length term for that frictional factor. If we have laminar flow through a cylindrical pipe the fanning friction factor is equal to 16 divided by the Reynolds number. For turbulent flow through a cylindrical pipe, the Colebrook equation is appropriate where the relationship is 1 over the square root of the fanning friction factor is equal to negative 4 times the base 10 logarithm of the surface roughness divided by 3.7 times D, the diameter of the pipe, plus 1.256 divided by the Reynolds number times the square root of the fanning friction factor. To understand everything, let's look at a specific example. Let's say we had a cylindrical pipe made out of steel with a nominal diameter of one inch and the pipe schedule is 40. From figure 2.10-3 the pipe roughness is given to us as 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. Table A.5-1 gives us an inside diameter of the pipe equal to 26.64 millimeters. Our relative roughness is just the pipe roughness divided by the diameter and that is given to us as 0.0017267. This is dimensionless. Our cross-sectional area, 5.57 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. 
In our particular example, let's say we have 10 gallons per minute of water flowing through the pipe and calculating on a cubic meters per second basis, that is 6.31 times 10 to the minus 4. Our temperature is 30 degrees Celsius and we can look up the density of water at 30 and that's 995.68 kilograms per cubic meter and the viscosity is 8.01 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter second. And these are given in uh, Appendix A.2-3 and 2-4. We calculate the average velocity, which is equal to the volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area, and that gives us 1.13 meters per second. Our Reynolds number, which is dv rho by mu, is 37,491, and it is dimensionless, and we know that it is in the turbulent region since it is above 2,000. Now we need to calculate our friction factor using the Colebrook equation. We don't know exactly what it will be since it appears implicitly on both the left-hand side and right-hand side of the Colebrook equation. So the first thing we're going to do is just guess a value. In this case, I select point zero zero two. Calculating the left-hand side of the Colebrook equation, 1 over the square root of f, gives us a value of 22.4. And the right-hand side of the equation uh, putting in the values, we calculate that to be 11.7. And the difference between the left-hand and right-hand side of the equation is 10.7. This indicates that the value of the friction factor has not been selected to give us a difference of zero. And I'll show you how to do this in the next slide. In order to find the proper value of f, we're going to be using the solver feature of Excel and this can be generated by clicking on the data button in the menu bar and then clicking on solver. The solver parameters menu now appears. My objective function is the difference between the left hand and right hand side of the equation which is in my case cell number G22 and I want that to equal a value of zero. And I'm going to achieve that by changing the variable, which is my friction factor F, which is currently set at cell number G19. Once those are entered, I can then click the solve button to calculate what F should be. After solver has run, we find that the friction factor that sets my difference equal to zero, and that value of f is 0 0.00669. We're now ready to calculate the pressure drop. I know that this is turbulent flow conditions, so my alpha will equal, point, equal 1. And I have straight pipe that's horizontal, and it's constant diameter, so the velocity out minus the velocity in, those terms squared, will equal zero. Also, if my pipe is horizontal, there is no elevation change, so my change in potential energy will also equal zero. I'm doing no mechanical work done on the fluid, so W sub S is zero. So my pressure drop equation reduces now to delta P equals negative 2 times rho times f times the velocity squared times L over D. If my pipe is one meter long or a thousand millimeters, I can calculate the delta P for this equation and plugging in those values, my units will come out as 638.6 pascals or in pounds per square inch, that will be 0 0.093.